All right, great. Um, so this week we're going to continue on the theme of what we did last time of what we're calling the evolutionary movement patterns. Um, so this one, last week we did the side to side lateral undulation of the spine and described how and showed how those movements of the spine naturally create coordinated movements of the whole body. So this week we're going to stick with the spinal movements and we'll do what we can call the, uh, what people call the dorsal ventral undulation. Dorsal meaning the back surface of the body, ventral meaning the front surface of the body. So you can just call it the front back undulation or spinal wave as well if you like. And um, the basic theme here is that we use simple movements and awareness to get movement and freedom of movement through each and every part of the spine to start with because we're doing spinal movements. So this idea of uh, the spine being a segmented structure and ourselves as segmental creatures. If you look at books of evolutionary biology and stuff, they talk about the uh, sort of process of evolution or the, the progression of evolution, if you like, in our own history, going from single-celled organisms to multiple-celled organisms, and then the development of uh, a front side and a back side, and then the developments of um, bilateral symmetry, having a left side and a right side and a centre line and developing a digestive tube and so on. And one of those crucial stages, which we share with all vertebrates and even things like worms, is the uh, development of a segmented body where both structurally and also genetically you have the development of one part and then the next 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 part, the next part like that. So you get the segmented structure, just like a worm has where you see those little bits and also just like we do in the shape of our spines and even in our skulls. Um, it's not so obvious with some creatures, but if you look at the skeleton and if you look at certain other structures and the geneticists now say as well, if you look at the genes, then yes, we are segmental creatures just like these other ones. So part of what we're doing with these evolutionary movement patterns, part of the idea is that first of all, we try and get segmental movement and segmental awareness, really importantly, segmental awareness all the way through the spine and then out of that come all of these other movements, which I like to call natural movements, and I consider them to be natural movements for a human because they start to happen by themselves once the spine becomes totally free. So that's not to say it's unnatural to have a stiff spine or whatever that doesn't move like that. That can be really practical for a lot of things. So I'm not saying this is the only type of naturalness. I'm just sort of using the word naturalness, uh, I guess, because I like it. Um, makes me feel nice. So anyway, you um, can start these in any position, but today I'll start in the sitting position again. So um, I'll start this, just, I'll just start with my legs like this just because it's easy. So just like last week, arbitrarily put my attention in any part of the spine. So again, I'll start with the belly button just because it's an obvious place so I can feel it. And to start with, just I'm just going to draw that area backwards and draw it forwards as if as if there's a string pulling it forwards and a string pulling it backwards okay so yeah if you move you'll see it so here the strings pulling it backwards here the strings pulling it forwards so here belly button goes in this part pulls back this part goes forwards and so just starting with this movement I get this rolling of the pelvis the pelvis rolls back the pelvis rolls forwards and also movement starts to happen in the chest and in the rib cage and from that movement in the chest and rib cage start to get movement of the shoulder blades so so if i start to make it bigger and i really go forwards as much as i can and backwards as much as i can forwards and so this is still just trying to move from here and just letting the rest of my body be as soft as it can be. And it starts to get this wave of movement. So it pulls back and then the movement travels up the spine and reaches the head. And then I pull this forwards and the movement travels up the spine and then eventually reaches the head like this. 
So of course there's these movements happening inside the hips and all through the rest of the body. And so then if I want to, I can, um, here I'll just turn so I can use my mat and um, you can just move around to however you, you feel like gets the best view. So then that was from the belly button. And so then obviously I can do the same as we did with the lateral undulation of just take my attention to another part of the spine. So maybe I'll take it to the pit of my throat. Again, using the front of the body to gain awareness of the back of the body because it, there's more, the front of the body is more familiar. So I've got more sensation here. And then by getting the movement going from this part, then I start to feel the relationship between what's happening here on the front and what's happening there on the back. As I pull myself forward from here, pull myself back from there, like this. And just with pleasant movement, of course, always the slower the movement is, the more subtlety we can feel between each position, but just starting with comfortable movements. And then I can bring my attention to here, maybe the Cyphoid process at the base of the ribcage and take it back, take it forward. So feeling what's happening in this upper abdominal area and that'll help me gain access to this part of my back. So pulling forwards, pulling back and so I'm here. Whenever I go back, this part sort of spreads and opens. And then whenever I go forwards, these muscles contract. And so this part sort of contracts like that. So obviously I can explore my whole spine and there's no reason why I can't go off to all of the different directions. And then there you go, there's the lateral undulation again, but just for demonstration purposes, we go with this one. And so then to develop this segmental awareness, I just, you know, here's the belly button, here's the xypho process. And so then I can do, again, the exact same movement and just put my attention halfway between the two. And so I get improved awareness of what's happening here. And there's so many layers of muscles. There's the layers on the front. There's the layers of muscles on the front of the spine. There's the layers of muscles on the back and sides of the spine and so on. And just by doing this, you know, I gradually, gradually, it becomes more familiar, fills in my body maps in my brain and so on. And by making it pleasant, then everything relaxes and my brain says, oh, there's movement in these areas. I'm getting to know them better. It feels nice. It reduces pain. It proprioception, blah, 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 all of that stuff. So then if I want to turn it into a strength exercise, still, it's still the point isn't strength like we normally think, it's still this development of segmental awareness. Then I can start doing these things like we've been doing in class where I start rolling the pelvis down and rolling it up and rolling it down. So here I'm feeling the tailbone, then the sacrum pressing into the ground, then the top of the sacrum and then gently coming up and just letting the rest of the body be soft. So this can be a smaller movement as I like if I want to just feel that bottom part of the movement and up and then a bit further and there's the middle and the top of the sacrum going down and up and then down sacrum, lowest lumbar vertebra, middle lumbar vertebra like that until we get this rolling down. So maybe if you I'm not sure if you can see, but this rolling down one vertebra at a time. And again, using the kinesthetic feedback from the ground to help me feel my back and help me feel my spine, you know, the sensitivity of the skin and so on. So it's much easier to feel as it presses into the ground, these parts of my back as they lift and I feel the floating ribs pressing in the lumbar spine, the sacrum, and the tailbone. And so this, you know, can do with the legs in any position, whatever. The idea is just segmental awareness of the spine. And again, you get these other classic exercises like the bridge, where we do this lifting the sacrum off, peeling the back off. So if I move my arm, you'll be able to see better. And then peeling the back back on. So trying not to dunk chunk the spine down but go one vertebra at a time do, do, do this one lumbar sacrum and then arching and then sacrum lumbar floating ribs lower ribs 
back of the shoulder blades up like that. So it's not about right and wrong. If there's some bits that are difficult, then you just go up and down over them a little bit more or back and forth over them a little bit more or you go slower and you find the parts that are unfamiliar or you find the parts that are tight and you just gradually, gradually, gradually fill them in. So, then in terms of what comes out of these movements, um, if I go into some sort of different position, so if I then, you know, start going onto all fours and start doing, okay, belly button, pulling up towards the ceiling, down towards the floor, up towards the ceiling, down towards the floor, then I can start to develop this segmental movement of the tucking the tailbone and the tucking travels up the spine to the head and then the untucking of the tailbone and the untucking travels up the spine to the head and it becomes this sort of movement and it's not it's not I'm not trying to sort of arch my back as much as I can or this as much as I can it's just getting that movement and awareness through the spine and then so if I take this into more and more what you can call functional or, or locomotive type movements so if I come over here so I've got a little bit of room to move and then if I go here for example and I start to move my just any part so now what I'm doing is with my attention in my tailbone I'm just moving my tailbone in a circle like this, just trying to keep it on this front back line, so not going to the sides and not twisting. Then I start to get, as I go back and down and then as I start to come forwards, by moving my tailbone like that, my feet naturally start pressing into the ground by themselves. It's like that movement of the tailbone activates the gluteal muscles and the hip muscles and the leg muscles and so on. And same with the arm muscles coming back and I can make it bigger. You know, it can go both directions. And so you start to see how all of these, lots of these classic movements you see in all these different exercise systems or whatever, come out of these, uh, these simple movements. So then if I come back to this position and we start to get more and more into uh, this movement, the, the front back spinal wave, to me uh, seems to be more of a, a mammalian uh, movement pattern if you like. I've seen some amphibians, frogs and stuff do it. Lizards don't seem to do it so much, although they do do this movement, but they don't seem to have the, the leg movement so much. But, you know, monkeys, it's, it's a huge one, but also dogs, cats, horses, and so on. Anyway, if I start doing same movement, so powering it from my pelvis, I'm taking it down, up and forwards, down and back, up and forwards. And again, you see how I start from here and I go down and back. And I'm not choosing to do this with my neck. It, this wave travels up the spine. And then when I start to go up and forwards from here, the wave travels up the spine. So it starts to propel, propel my weight forwards onto my toes. It starts to send this wave up, which then goes out to the hands, like this. Hey, Carrie. And of course it feels really great, which is why I do it. And then if I start to add more force to it, then it starts to actually give me some momentum forwards. So this is still just coming from this part of my body just going a little circle like that, and that sends my arms forwards and it becomes
becomes like your classic frog leap. And then in terms of human movement patterns or primate movement patterns, then you can go just jumping up. It's that same thing. The wave starts from down here. And if the spine's free, then that wave travels through the body out to the fingertips. And it goes all the way through the hips, knees, feet, and toes. And you can see how if you would have all of these jumping things and the arms go to full extension, which then means just like here, they then, because they're fully extended, they're ready to pull, pull back. And if you think of climbing or, uh, you know, anything where you need to jump up, grab something and pull, then you see where this, this is leading, this idea of whole body movements coming out of a free spine. And if you then link this with the, the side to side undulation stuff, like with the lizard, the lizard walking stuff we were doing last week, then out of that, you start to get all of these uh, bounding kind of motions, like if you see a cat, or a cheetah, or a dog, or a horse, any kind of mammal, as it runs, it's a combination of these two. It's got the side to side undulation going out to the limbs of the spine. And also these really clear front back spinal waves, this dorsal ventral undulation as they move forwards. Um, so, yeah, we'll continue on this theme. Hopefully that gives you the idea of the segmental movement of the spine turns into whole body movement. And you just start off, you can do it on starting on your back with all of these movements. And then you just flip over onto all fours, do the same thing, see what it brings up onto all fours like this or like this. See what it brings up, hands and feet in different positions. Come to a squat, do the same thing, see what happens and then as that starts to translate into pressure going through the feet, then you just extend it again and see what it turns into there. And um, hopefully anyone who tries it will get the feeling of why, it's, why I'm calling these natural movements or evolutionary movements because um, you start seeing them everywhere in nature. Uh, yeah, cool. I'll leave it at that again for this week, and next week we'll start to do rotations.